Boom shakalaka. What is going on, everybody? Randall here from Crypto Love, and I am joined today by Tommy Wen, the founder of DBX Chain. What's going on, Tommy? Oh. Hey, what's I'm up? here at Beijing now. Oh, that's awesome. I've always wanted to travel to China. I'm going to make it there one of these days, and I'll come visit. Yeah. So, um, Tommy, today we are talking about DBX Chain. So, um, give us real fast, like a, an elevator pitch. What is DBX Chain? Oh, actually, DBX means database X. It literally meaning a very large database. But actually, DBX is a blockchain that we designed dedicated to real world application, like high frequency payments or other industrial application. These are the current blockchain's big disadvantages because like Ethereum, they cannot do many industrial applications. That's what we are focused on. Wonderful. And how did you get into DBX? How did you get into blockchain? What's your story? Oh, actually, that's a long story. <laughs> well, we've got a half an hour, so. <laughs> well. Yeah, yeah, very sad story as well. Because mm -hmm. uh, actually, I began this company when I was a freshman in university. And then uh, on the junior year, that is third year of the university, I read the, you know, the, uh, the big Bitcoin white paper, that very famous white paper. Mm -hmm. And the Bitcoin white paper actually guided me to mining because just using very ordinary, very cheap computer in the dormitory, you can actually dig out block, uh, Bitcoin. And, you know, at that time, Bitcoin is so cheap mm -hmm. that you use to buy a pizza, you have to pay that 10K. So <laughs> just do not think that Bitcoin can be a very valuable something. It's just a very cheap thing. And... You know, it's a nerd one. So actually, I have digged out 1,003 Bitcoins. Mm -hmm. And then I have sold them at $30 each. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a huge amount of money. That's at my graduation year. Mm -hmm. And I think I have earned a lot of money. And it just invited all the girls in my class and invited them to a huge dinner. Uh-huh. And I hope it was, I hope it was worth it. <laughs> That's a sad story. Mm -hmm. All right. And so how did how did you go from that to to I guess you started DBX back in university and you've just been working on it since then? No, no, no. Actually, that's my first experience of blockchain that is with Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a sad story. And yeah. then afterwards, actually, I just keep running the company because the company uh, currently in Beijing and it is created in my freshman year. That is in 2009. So mm -hmm. it's been nearly a decade of operating a technical development company in different parts of technical issues. Uh, but in late 2016, to be exact, that is... November 2016, we began the DBX project because we have checked the Ethereum project and we think that it is not regarded as a real world application blockchain because the major function of Ethereum is to make your own coin and then go for ICO. Yeah, so that has led to a lot of problems that we have foreseen. Because in 2016, we think that, yeah, Ethereum is a very good blockchain. But uh, based on its consensus mechanism, based on its design, uh, I don't think that it's very suitable for industrial applications. Mm -hmm. Because in my experience of running a technical um, major development team of the company, we have developed a lot of software for industrial applications. Uh, like the state grid uh, of China, like a lot of banks. And we really know that the blockchain is actually not for real world application for a long time. Because it's like a theory. It's like a utopia. Mm -hmm. And everybody loves the utopia, they loves the story, especially in 
the last winter, right, in the end of 2017 and at the beginning of the year when there is a bow market and everybody is issuing coins. Mm -hmm. That has led to a very bad influence is that uh, most of the projects are scammed. Mm -hmm. uh, especially, yeah, also I'm a Chinese. Yeah, uh, I, I think um, most of them think that oh, the Chinese projects are all scams. Yeah, I admit that. Yeah, really, most of the projects are scams because mm -hmm. in a bow market, everybody focuses on collecting money. Right, yeah. yeah. And so more information about the DBS blockchain, how do we do that? Um, it is actually a database blockchain because that's why we named the database apps, DBS. Um, so I want I wanted to ask you about that because the, the like space that, you know a lot of a lot of these a lot of these things that were out there were just kind of putting a we're creating a database for the blockchain but with the blockchain you don't exactly need a database so how does how does how is DBX a database on the blockchain and how is that necessary? Um, actually, database is not mm -hmm. what we mean literally because mm -hmm. it is a database X. Oh, it's gotcha. Variety. It's not a database. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, that's kidding. So uh -huh. uh, actually, database has a variety of definition. Uh, different people have different understandings of database. But mm -hmm. we, DBX chain, use a very different generalization of the blockchain working process. Because uh, the blockchains like Ethereum, like EOS, like EOS, they use transactions, right? Most of the chains use transactions because we will deem everything as transaction in the blockchain. So that's a deal. And mm -hmm. actually this is not very friendly to a lot of real world application because many applications use transaction for very rare cases. For example, if you listen to an online streaming music, most of the works is about streaming the music data, right? When is the transaction? It's just when you pay it. Mm -hmm. And actually for iTunes, you just pay it automatically without your consent sometimes. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually we have designed a new blockchain based on graphing technology. Uh, we majorly focus on data exchange. We have a data exchange mechanism. Uh, we just updated our white paper to clarify more about the mechanism of data exchange. Actually, we deem everything in the blockchain as data exchange. That is a huge difference because in the old time, we just use transaction. And we have to apply transaction to everything. Mm -hmm. We have to deem everything as transaction. But for application, actually, in most cases, they are doing data exchange. So actually we define a new way that is for each data exchange, there is a buyer, there is a seller, and you must invite at least a note as witness so that they can check the data, they can keep the exchange fair. Mm -hmm. So uh, for example, uh, if we are going to do a transaction, in DBX chain, it will be a bilateral exchange of data. That means you said you paid me and you said I paid you, right? It's a bilateral exchange of data. So this is a new mechanism we have designed for blockchain so that the real world application developer, they will find it much more friendly to develop apps. Now yes. you have to just comply everything to transaction. But in DBS chain, you don't have to. You just use the normal way because I'm a, a tech guy, actually. I have been coding for nearly 20 years. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I began coding when I was nine right. and had won the national competition in computer science in China when I was 17. Oh, that's and awesome. I'm jealous. Uh, admittance uh, examination to get to the university. I mm. just got recommended because I won the national prize. Wow. Uh, so I had been a coder for two decades. Mm -hmm. And I know what developer really wants. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. 
So just curious, when <clears throat> with DBX, how we have the two transactions going as opposed to just the one transaction previously, does that mm -hmm. slow things down because there are potentially twice as many transactions? Or how does that affect speed? Yeah, actually, uh, the traditional transaction per second, we will use that as our KPI as the same. Mm -hmm. um, but actually, we still have it higher uh, because we have a new mechanism of consensus. That is mm -hmm. called DDPoS. Uh, yeah, so let's go into that. What's DDPoS? Right. Uh, it is actually another D. <laughs> It's yeah. like a misspelling. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's a good segue. So let's talk about DDPoS. What is yeah. that? Uh, actually, this is the mechanism of consensus of the DBX chain. Uh, why? Because we are, yes, based on DPoS. Because I think delegated proof of stake is perhaps the only effective solution to the efficiency problem of the blockchain. Otherwise, it will never be realized in the real world because it's so low efficiency. Like in Bitcoin network, you need nearly one hour to completely confirm the transaction. So that is not industrial acceptable. So uh, yes, indeed, DPoS use delicate mechanisms so that they can improve the efficiency so obviously. Like it is like uh, perhaps millions of times uh, per second. Uh, yes, but that leads to a lot of problems to be resolved. Uh, that's why we did not uh, directly use EOS. Because mm -hmm. in EOS world, yes, the efficiency is relatively high, although not high enough, I will explain later. And you have had serious security problem. You know, before the official launch of the EOS network, and it has been attacked. So, although it is a security team actually from China, and I know the founder of the, that security team. Uh, uh, I know the Chinese founder of the whole group of the security team, that is 360. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they actually found serious security problem of EOS and has stopped the whole major net from going online. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is really terrible. And then one week later, the whole network has been stopped for nearly two hours, also for security issues. So why is that? It's because that in DPoS, each node have 30 votes, right? So it is really easy to be, uh, to be rigged. Like it's really easy to do the battle rigging mm -hmm. because I can create complex nodes so that I can have a lot of controls of the network because I know the votes. And there are also another disadvantage. Uh, it's, it's about the easy to predict property, uh, this kind of aspect of the EOS network is so predictable because based on the blockchain explorer, you can actually uh, deduce about the results, the future results, it's very easy to deduce. So actually, predictability is the huge enemy of security. I will have you an example. If you want to infiltrate into your military base, right? It's like perhaps uh, Zone 51 in Las Vegas, North Park. And if the patrol is very regular and very easy to predict, mm -hmm. it's so easy to go in, right? But if the patrol is totally unpredictable and it's random, right? Like every five minutes and then every 10 seconds and then they use John. <laughs> so this kind, you will be really hard to enter, to infiltrate this military base. So it's a vivid example to help you understand. Mm -hmm. And actually we use this kind of mechanism of partially random and partially based on the contribution to the network, like the data you have uploaded, data you have analyzed, and partially based on the network connectivity, so that you will get the fastest nodes to justify for you. Um, I will explain that in a very simple way. I said before that we have a transaction 
defined as data exchange, right? So each data you have a buyer, you have a seller, and you must invite at least one Trinity node for witness. So actually, the voting in the DBS chain is passive. It means that you cannot choose who to vote. You just judge the data quality. For example, if one node provides with a picture and the buyer needs it to be an image of a car, and the witness node will justify, will judge whether it is a car, right? If they judge that it is a car, it will automatically cast a vote to the seller of the picture, to the seller of the data. So if they judge it as not a car or as bad quality, they will not cast the vote. So this is a trick because if you want to do cheating, do ballot rigging in the network, you have to make the witness node, namely the Trinity nodes in the network to tell lies, right? You must say that, no, this is not a car, although it is a car. Mm -hmm. But this will have very negative effect on the Trinity node itself because their job is to judge the data quality. If you always tell lies, the contractors, the buyer and the seller will not invite you any longer mm -hmm. because your service is really bad. But this is the only way to do the ballot rigging. So we created actually a very positive dilemma here. It's a positive dilemma. Yeah. That's a, I, I mean, that sounds really interesting because it, it sounds like you've kind of cleared up the whole problem with ballot rigging by using these Trinity nodes and by doing that. Yeah, yeah. It's by a, that we say, positive dilemma. Perfect. So you've got some other unique things uh, with DBX, one would be side chains and the other would be your reward mechanism, RODS. So can you tell us a little bit about those? Okay, um, so uh, maybe I'll emphasis on the RODS part mm -hmm. uh, because it is a very important part on the rewards of data supply. Because uh, traditionally the data supply is really hard to define and hard to qualify. Because uh, somebody will say that it is a car and somebody will say that it is not a car. But uh, actually we have several principles to follow. The first one is Cody's law. That is actually the spirit of blockchain, right? So actually the Trinity node will use a open source library that has been cited by many of the nodes. They will use a open source software to judge the quality of the data. So that will be fair because uh, it's a fair play. Uh, like the buyer and the seller, they will agree on the code because the Trinity node only executes the code that both sides know. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually it's about the agreement of the two sides. So if you also think that you both think that the uh, code is good. The code can tell the quality correctly. That would be good. And the second one is that uh, we actually base the result by the market. Because we believe that in a positive market, in a running market, most of the people will not tell a lie. Otherwise, the whole market collapse. It's like the positive dilemma I said. Right? Mm -hmm. So in this way, we believe that the contribution of the network, if it is recognized by many of the nodes, at least that we define is 51% of the nodes, if they agree that the data is of good quality, we will regard them as good quality. But we should have at least 12 nodes that have recognition in the network. So uh, based on the RDS part, yeah, uh, the RDS part is majorly about how to define the quality of the data so that we can calculate, as we said in the white paper, we have a mechanism of mathematics to distribute the rewards. Okay, and another thing, yeah, you said about the side train one. Uh, the side train is actually a very critical technology that I introduced earlier to justify, to uh, 
let the blockchain be real world applicable. Uh, let me have a, a vivid example for you. That is about uh, the two side chain mechanism. Um, it's like this. We have two chains working together using different type, different level of encryption algorithm. For example, the first chain will use uh, the, for example, MD5. Yeah. Although we know that MD5 is not secure enough, it's never used for serious website, right? But it has very fast speed, really fast, lightning fast. So that the first chain will actually accept the traffic. For example, in some of the D apps we have been running, they have huge traffic. Uh, like we have had a D app of nearly $1 billion of traffic per year. Uh, that are their transaction and all their transactions are in very small amount, maybe one dollar or less than one dollar. So there are a lot of transactions and very high traffic. We use a first side chain to receive the traffic. This kind of side chain can have CDNs and other comparatively or a relatively centralized mechanism to build the traffic receiving part. So that this part of the chain can receive traffic. And for example, they use MD5 so that they will have really lightning fast hash. So we will make sure that this is with high efficiency and the whole chain will not collapse on a huge traffic. And another chain is actually with secured algorithm of encryption. It's like SHA256. Uh, it's like this. It's military level, actually. It's mm -hmm. bank level. But it's much slower. It's like more than 10 times slower. But in this part, they will do the same thing or do the same in a queue, in a queue by atomic timer. So that the queue is strictly ordered. They will do it simultaneously in another chain. That is to log in and make sure that they are secure, to log in all the data, to put all the data on the serious chain and to make it seriously safe. Mm -hmm. um, in this process, there is a, maybe some chance people will think that there were probability, or actually it is possibility, not probability. There is possibility of cheating. But how low is that? It's less than one ten billions. It's very, very low possibility of cheating because they have very short time difference. Like in the Lightning Network, there were huge time difference because the Lightning Network of Bitcoin will tell you the transaction is okay within one second. And then actually the final confirmation is about one hour later. So that can be highly risky. But mm -hmm. in our case, it's less than 10 seconds of the time difference. So this is the industrial technology we are applying, already applied because we are holding several very high traffic real world payment applications. Gotcha. All right. So where are you guys in development right now? Uh, actually, uh, uh, as I had a joke that people think that maybe most of the China's projects are scam. Yeah, I admit, <laughs> but we are not. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, we have done things in a very different way. Uh, that is, we actually raised funds from our team member. Uh, actually, we have uh, like 60K dollars, 60K dollars mm -hmm. raised by ourselves to do the development before our fundraising. Okay, uh, so uh, actually before fundraising, we have done our testnet that has been launched in this June. And we have done our wallet, that is in this July. And we have done our first D app, uh, that is much earlier in this May. So uh, actually, we have done most of the thing that a lot of projects promised to do like a year later. We have mm -hmm. done all of that. And then we began the fundraising, uh, first began in June with some private equities, with some private investors but they invest Ethereum. And then uh, we are going to launch our ICO 
next Monday, that is September 24th. So mm -hmm. we really want to be a very responsible project that we will realize our ethics, our value, that we will be responsible because we have developed. Most of the projects have done, maybe we'll have done in a year later. We have already done all the major parts like testnet, wallet, first DF, et cetera. And then we began crowdfunding. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely impressive. Not, not a lot of projects have a testnet, a wallet, and dApps out before they do their ICS. That's cool. Yeah. And yeah. how much are you planning on raising with your ICO and what are you going to be using that to do? Um, actually, we are going to have 2,875 BTCs. I mean, mm -hmm. That is a yeah, very uh, exact uh, calculation of the fund we are going to raise because we only receive BTC. Uh, mm -hmm. It's because the price of Ethereum has been like a mess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. so we only receive BTC, but the number 2A75 BTC is what we are going to receive. Uh, mm -hmm. We are going to raise. Okay. And then what, like, what, type of, what type of updates or what's your roadmap? What do you plan on doing with these funds that you receive from the ICO? Um, so actually, 60% uh, of them will be uh, invest in the development of the future version of the major net, of the main net, and of the wallet. And then uh, the following parts uh, are actually uh, mostly for the uh, maintenance of the team and development of uh, the business. And then we are going to expand more uh, dApps so that we can invite more cooperators to do the ecology of the whole DBS network together. Cool. So uh, last question for me is what excites you the most about DBX? Well, actually it is about real world application indeed um, because uh, DBX is originally a blockchain just for data exchange. Uh, that is in the first implementation because we have began the project in November, 2016. That is nearly two years ago. And actually uh, in the beginning and still now, we are doing a blockchain for data exchange. And it is to protect the rights of the data. It's like our slogan to free your data because you know the technical giants, Facebook, Google, they just you know, control your data and use it at will. And we believe that all the data, all the rights of the data should be protected and all the use of the data should be with your consent. And all the gains from the data, all the revenues the giants gain from the data should be paid, should be have a share with you. Mm -hmm. So that's the original spirit of our DBX chain. And then later we discovered that uh, perhaps the most important thing for a blockchain project is to realize them, is to apply them in real world application. Because if you, a uh, blockchain, the whole blockchain theme is just a utopian thing. It's just a hypothesis. Uh, people will not feel excited actually because it's like internet several decades ago. But if we put them into real world application, the whole blockchain world will change. The people's opinions about the blockchain industry will totally change. So uh, actually it is in the beginning of this year, it's like in January and February, uh, we decided to generalize all the blockchain applications so that we can make a blockchain for general developers, for the real world application developers, because they need data exchanges. They need transaction much less. So now the major slogan and the major spirit, although it is still free your data, but we add it by apps, by apps, apps and apps. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually now the spirit and the most exciting thing is that DBX project is going to make perhaps the world's first 
industrial applicable and the real applicable of the blockchain. Because before that, blockchain is more or less a utopian thing. It's like a jig thing. But we want to make a real world application blockchain so that it will really change your life, really change your daily life. It will really have the wonderful D apps. It's not just FOMO 3D or Crypto Kitties. <laughs> it's real world, like easier payments through countries, right? Like high frequency payment, like your daily payments and voting without fraud. Some kind of the real world application that will really change your daily life and affect the whole world. That's what excites us most. And that's what drives us most. Wonderful, wonderful. I think that's what, that's what uh, I mean, it's great to hear that that's what you're enthusiastic about because I think that's the direction the whole ecosystem needs to go in is real world adoption. Indeed. So um, for anyone who's interested, how can they find out more about DBX and also about the ICO? Oh, actually, we have put all the critical information and detailed information on our website. That is www.dbx.one. It's like, oh, it's in the opposite, opposite, uh, opposite uh, direction. Uh, mm -hmm. It is, yeah, oh, it's the opposite <laughs> direction. <laughs> dbx.one. You can visit our website, dbx.one. Dbx Perfect. And with ICO, which is going to launch next Monday, the website is supportus.dbx.one. Yeah, it's not ICO. Dot. It's supportus.dbx.one. <laughs> Perfect. Well, Tommy, it sounds really good. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate Peace. the work.